Today, we will talk about earnings before interest, depreciation, and amortization, EBITDA, which is a measure of company earnings that adds interest expense, depreciation, and amortization back to the net income number. Earnings before interest, depreciation and amortization is a measure of the earnings of a company that adds the interest expense, depreciation, and amortization back to the net income number. However, it does include tax expenses. This measure is not as well known or used as often as its counterpart, earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation and amortization, EBITDA. There are various ways to calculate EBITDA, such as adding interest, depreciation, and amortization to net income. Another way to calculate EBITDA is to add depreciation and amortization to earnings before interest and taxes and then subtract taxes. The metric is generally used to analyze companies in the same industry. It does not include the direct effects of financing, where taxes a company pays are a direct result of its use of debt. EBITDA can often be found as a metric for companies that do not pay taxes. This can include many non-profits, such as non-for-profit hospitals or charity and religious organizations. In this case, it can be used interchangeably with EBITDA. EBITDA is calculated by deducting certain costs from EBIT or operating profit. The formula for EBITDA is, EBITDA equals EBIT plus depreciation plus amortization, taxes. As an example, consider a company with the following financial information. EBITDA is calculated by first finding EBIT which is calculated as the difference between total net revenue and operating costs. In this example, we'll want to subtract the cost of goods sold, SNA expenses, depreciation expense, and amortization expenses from total revenue. In this example, EBIT is $575,000. However, EBITDA does not want to consider the non-cash flow items such as depreciation or amortization. Both are typically accounting entries that record an expense that does not tie to the cash outlay on the financial statements. Therefore, both depreciation and amortization need to be added back in. Last, EBITDA also considers interest. Because interest is not an operating expense, it is not naturally included in operating profit. Therefore, companies will want to include this expense in as it is often avoidable and on a fixed schedule. In this example, the final EBITDA is calculated as, EBITDA equals $575,000, EBIT, plus $50,000 plus $25,000, $100,000 equals $550,000. Earnings before interest, depreciation, and amortization is considered to be a more conservative valuation measure than EBITDA because it includes the tax expense in the earnings measure. The EBITDA measure removes the assumption that the money paid in taxes could be used to pay down debt, an assumption made in EBITDA. This debt payment assumption is made because interest payments are tax deductible, which, in turn, may lower the company's tax expense, giving it more money to service its debt. EBITDA, however, does not make the assumption that the tax expense can be lowered through the interest expense and, therefore, does not add it back to net income. EBITDA as an earnings measure is very rarely calculated by companies and analysts. It serves little purpose, then, if EBITDA is not a standard measure to track, compare, analyze and forecast. Instead, EBITDA is widely accepted as one of the major earnings metrics. As well, EBITDA can be deceptive as it'll still always be higher than net income, and in most cases, higher than EBIT as well. And like other popular metrics, EBITDA isn't regulated by generally accepted accounting principles, GAAP, thus, what's included is at the company's discretion. Along with the criticism of EBIT and EBITDA, the EBITDA figure does not include other key information, such as working capital changes and capital expenditures, CAPEX. EBITDA and EBITDA are both profitability measurements that compare a company's earnings after certain expenses have been considered. The only difference between the two is the treatment of taxes. EBITDA does not consider taxes, while EBITDA does deduct the amount of taxes owed. Therefore, EBITDA is often a higher calculation due to it consider one less corporate expense. EBITDA is used to gauge how profitable a company is when not considering some non-cash flow expenses. For instance, 
both depreciation and amortization are expensed over time not in line with when an initial investment and cash outlay may have occurred. Therefore, EBITDA gives an organization a better understanding of what its profitability is from a cash-generating standpoint. As a baseline, a company's EBITDA must be positive if it hopes to achieve positive cash flow. Even then, EBITDA adds back in depreciation and amortization, so it is possible for a company to have a positive EBITDA and yet still lose money each period. A company should strive to have an EBITDA high enough to sustain company growth as well as tracking what competitive company EBITDAs are to make sure their own is comparable. EBITDA is a measure of company earnings that considers operating profit, depreciation, amortization, and interest. Companies use EBITDA to better understand their profitability as well as getting a gauge on how their earnings are after stripping away some financial accounting calculations that are not tied to cash flow. EBITDA is very similar to EBITDA, though the latter also incorporates taxes. Here are five key takeaways. 1. Earnings before interest, depreciation and amortization, EBITDA, is an earnings metric that adds interest and depreciation slash amortization back to net income. 2. EBITDA is said to be more conservative compared to its EBITDA counterpart, as the former is generally always lower. 3. The EBITDA measure removes the assumption that the money paid in taxes could be used to pay down debt. 4. However, EBITDA is not often used by analysts, who instead opt for either EBITDA or EBIT. 5. The components needed to calculate EBITDA can be found on a company's income statement. Hope this would help. Thanks for watching.